on the line with me now to discuss this further is Peter Murray from the Executive Operations at ATNS. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining us today. It's quite a fascinating environment to look at right now. We have seen quite a significant uptick on a global level. We've seen consolidation. We've seen all the troubles coming to the fore and, of course, job cuts uh, on a global level as well. Where do we stand right now with air traffic? Uh, good afternoon, Eleni. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we're uh, sitting in a, in a situation where the uh, traffic volumes, air traffic movement-wise, are fairly static. Uh, we've seen them drop off from around 689,000 movements in 2007 down to around 620,000 that we estimate uh, that we'll have this year. So it's been a significant uh, drop off and the growth going forward uh, in terms of air traffic movements we don't believe will be that large but uh, we're looking in the region of two and a half to three percent. It's quite fascinating when you look at the overall trend because, yes, air traffic movement has uh, been subdued. But one of the other key themes has, that has come to the fore is bigger aircraft, which means that more passengers fit in these bigger aircraft, which means less uh, traffic movement as well. That's correct, yes. We, we've seen a number of airlines change their aircraft from uh, 747s to uh, A380s and also increasing the size of the mid-range fleet uh, from uh, 737 200s, 300s, and 400s to 737-800s. So while it uh, certainly allows the passenger numbers to grow, it doesn't uh, result in an increase in the uh, air traffic movement side. Mm. Well, I mean, looking at uh, the load factors, they remain uh, relatively high at this point in time. And according to a report by our ARTA that was released a short while ago, this uh, also offsetting fuel costs. But just let's get into the fuel cost scenario that is playing out. We've got Brent crude sitting at $103 a barrel. If the tensions continue in the Middle East and in North Africa, this could be quite a big blow for the cost scenarios. Uh, and eventually, airlines are going to have to start passing this on to the consumer as well. Could this be a big blow to the fragile recovery that we've seen in traffic movement well certainly what uh, what we what we see is that uh, the increase in uh, fuel costs and the like does impact on passenger numbers and ultimately on uh, on air traffic movements as well um, obviously I think uh, all the operators in the area be it the airline the airport or the air navigation service providers such as ourselves we, we, we always focus on trying to improve the operating efficiency for the airlines to ensure that they get the biggest bang for their buck when it comes to uh, to uh, using fuel wisely and then ensuring that uh, that there's no uh, unnecessary uh, or excessive wastage in the operating environment. Uh, this at a time where you know the green scenario is taking over, uh, and of course we're really concerned about global warming and the impact that uh, the aviation industry has on uh, the globe's carbon footprint as well. What uh, moves are made on a technological front to try and change this? I mean, obviously you're talking about air traffic movement and ensuring that you're relatively efficient when you look at the routes. Uh, what else can be done? What are the new trends? Well, the new trends are, are, are focused on uh, improving the operating procedures into and out of airports. We're moving away from the current procedures to a concept called performance-based navigation, which will allow aircraft to uh, take uh, the shortest route between any two points and fly the optimum flight profile that will allow them to, to use minimum fuel. So they'll be able to seek out the favorable winds on the long haul flights and when they arrive at the other airport, they'll be or at their destination, they will then be able to do a uh, continuous descent into that airport without having to uh, add any power or, or, or the like to ensure that the, the operation is as uh, efficient as possible. And obviously an efficient operation in that sense translates into less fuel burnt and that translates into less, less greenhouse gases that are emitted.